Um, thank you for sticking with us. I am so excited to welcome to the stage stars of Raising Hope, Lucas Neff and Shannon Woodward. What's up, guys? Hello. How's it going? It's going well. How's it going? Pretty well. Can't complain. Cool. Um, so we just watched what I believe was the season premiere of season three, which you have just wrapped up. Looking back on the year, what was your takeaway from the third season of Raising Hope? What'd you take, Lucas? Oh man, so much. Uh, he took a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, God, to share it all right now. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we're sort of entering, uh, at the end of season three, we're going into a real new place. You know, we're married now. Uh, we're sort of a new family, we moved out. If you look at where we started at season one, it's just, uh, um, you know, just a whole new ball game. So I, I like to see where the changes are coming. Growing up, yeah. that baby is a hundred now. I do have to say, I kind of like. I mean, obviously the journey was fun, but I enjoy the sort of Jimmy Sabrina will they won't they has sort of lapsed, and it's really just about settling into the. They stand did. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, they did. Are you guys? Are you guys sort of glad you can explore the next phase, sort of the what comes next after the courtship? Yeah, I think it's fun. I mean, I think it's. Listen, people, everybody watched Friends. We all know what the will they won't they thing is. It's like they, they killed it. Like, I mean, in a, in a good way. Like, it, we're, we're never going to top that. Yeah. It's more Friends interesting. Friends murdered it. No, I, mean, I mean, in the best way. It's like that. Good that, murder. That, Excellent murder. It's, yeah, good it's, murder. Good know, murder. Cool. I just feel like the sitcom, like, love triangle, will they won't they thing. It just, people have done it so well. It's just, I think it's kind of more interesting to just be like, and this is a non issue. And we can, you can kind of grow up and have a family and like have like an actual, you know, we have enough drama in our lives. This show's about jokes. And again, yeah, marriage is totally not dramatic. So, you know what I mean? It'll be it's nice and easy. It's sailing from here on out. But I have to say, the one thing that I always thought Raising Hope did amazingly well was blend, you know, really over the top sort of premises. I mean, for example, there was one episode this season that basically began with Martha and uh, Garrett's characters trying to neuter a squirrel because they thought it was raping other squirrels. It was raping other I'm squirrels. Sorry, I, I, it no, wasn't, though. I didn't, I didn't want to, like, get involved in a crime. I kept the allegedly in. Allegedly raping. Innocent until proven guilty, this right? Is America, man. But, what I, but they can marry that with really powerful sort of heart storylines. It's really emotional. That's right, we take an idea like squirrel rape and we really just, you know, we go for the heart. <laughs> I think that's kind of what, like Greg Garcia, he, you know, he created My Name is Earl and stuff too. And I think that's, it's kind of like his forte. It's like taking these like ridiculous scenarios and then like in the last like eight minutes inserting like so much heart into it, you're like, almost crying. Oh, it's very sweet. Actually he's really crying. amazing. He's really great yeah. at it. And it's like and it's I think it's its own tone. I don't think there's a lot of other stuff on television that's, you know, kind of that broad mix of just like complete inanity and then like genuine genuine heartfelt yeah. <laughs> stuff. What? <laughs> Yeah, I, I really love the Big Bang Theory's squirrel rape episode. <laughs> you know. But I mean, I completely agree with what you're saying, Shannon, because the season finale that with the with the mom necklace and then the scene at the end where you know Sabrina says like I am with my family. I feel like that is exactly what Raising Hope is about. I mean, would you agree? I totally agree. And at the beginning of that episode, we're chopping up squirrels. Right. We're like chopping up roadkill to eat it. Like so, you know, it's it's really yeah, it's sweet. I think it's really unique, and it makes the show. Relevant, I think. You know? And a PETA favorite. PETA favorite, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, one of the things that I feel like any Raising Hope panel would be remiss without talking about are the two amazing girls who play Hope. Um, they always say never work with babies and never work with animals. We've clearly covered the animals. Uh, but talk to me a little bit about working with the girls and sort of, I mean, I think they're two of the most talented actors on television. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, they, the two of you. They do, they do whatever they want. <laughs> they are douchebags. No, they're the sweetest. I mean, we've had them on the show since they were six months old. Yeah, since they're little puddles. They're like three and a half now. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's different. Every season working with them has been, has been different because they're changing so rapidly. And I think that's sort of um, a sort of neat sort of Nat Geo aspect of it for me. I'm like, what are these little things? <laughs> he had never <laughs> seen a baby before. No, I haven't. I have no idea how this works, um, which is useful. Um, I, I think they're lovely. That's the thing about them is they're so... It's kind of unfortunate sometimes because a lot of the storylines involve them being horrible and, like, breaking things or, or not... or being, you know, like, like bad children. And they're so well-behaved. that's the opposite. Like, we have to, like, they always, like, when something falls Throw down... Throw it on the floor. Like, oh! <laughs> 
their their mother is so terrific. They'll be like, well, like now rip it off the tree, like rip it off yeah. and throw it on the ground and go no, and they go. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, thank you. <laughs> like, just say no. Yell, no, mama. Yeah. They're, they're terrific. They're amazing kids. It's been great to be able to... Listen, everybody wants to be able to cuddle a child that they don't have to change. Right. Yeah. The ones you can give back. I don't have to feed the them I mean, when yeah. I don't feel like it. I don't mm-hmm. have to clean up poop. Yeah, just give they're us amazing. another couple of years. We'll ruin them. <laughs> As actors, does it give you sort of a new sense of improvisation or sort of going with the flow when you work with children in the way you do? Those kids hate their marks. They like they've been raised. They're television acting machines. Like they're way better at hitting marks than I am. They do whatever we tell them to at this point. Like it's there's like very there's no improvisation or anything with that. They're actually like they're like real actors. It's crazy. I, I think in all seriousness, one thing I think you really learn to respect with with working with babies is time management. We were just like, okay, we have so much time before they really don't want to be doing this anymore. And you can't really explain to them, but, but listen, uh, there are lots of people in America who will watch this soon, and they would like it if you were to do this. So please pick up the pee and throw it at my face. I know um, it's two in the morning, but we have to get the shot. But yeah, so you figure out like, okay, we've got about five minutes to try and get this shot um, with them before like they have to go be babies and play. And uh, you know, so you, you just learn to be like, what's going to do this? How do we do this quickly? And how do we re- respect their time as three-year-olds? You guys have met kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps on the same page or a converse page, working with Cloris Leachman, I would have to imagine, is also an experience. Because I've interviewed her several times, and she's yeah. amazing. But it's like, you're on Cloris' time. I kind of I think that it's like piloting a helicopter if the helicopter was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> I like a drunk helicopter. She also happens to be an incredible actress. It's, so it's yeah. like, it's a real catch-22. Right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, she's amazing. But yeah, a handful. Definitely a handful. Yeah, and I'm always like, how do I get her hands out of my pants? <laughs> He's, by the way, not kidding. No, that's 90% of my scenes with he her. He loves a man. <laughs> Just like, okay, cool. This is not going to go over well. <laughs> it's weird when she does that to Jimmy. Um, But, you know, one of the great things about, as we were talking about before, the evolution of Raising Hope has been seeing the characters grow. I would love to hear from each of you what you've enjoyed about your characters' arcs over the last three years. You go. Nope. (laughs) All right. Um, I, uh, you know, it's been been fun to kind of watch the character kind of grow from, you know, when I first started on the show, I was only in, like, two scenes in the pilot and, like, you know, Greg called me and was like, listen, I know you're not in it a lot right now, but in six months you will be. If we get to the second season, like, you know, we're going to focus on you a lot more and you're going to be the mother of the baby at some point. So, like, you know, it was a matter of, like, getting there. And, like, he told me, you know, four years ago that that was what was going to happen. And, you know, I think we're lucky enough that we've gone long enough that that actually occurred. But so it's been fun because, you know, they kind of had nothing really on the page at all for me. So they kind of developed it around, I think, around my own personality a little bit and then tried to figure out how to fit me into the show. So that's been kind of fun. It was always a surprise, you know? So that was fun. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know that there was always a, like a, a blueprint for like, oh, this will be Jimmy's arc. I think the writers have sort of been feeling it out as the show's gone on. Uh, I'm, I'm not... We like to say that I'm not stupid. We like to say that to each other. <laughs> um, you know, so there's that. You're just simple. Yeah. What? Um, but uh, I think that, like, you know, Jimmy's in some ways turning into his parents. Like, you know, he's growing up and there's, like, he's less anxious about certain things. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, babies fall down out of trees and stuff, whatever. <laughs> you know? um, they bounce, right? But they, they, uh, Jimmy, they don't bounce. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. That's it. There's the show. But, yeah. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, like, he's married now, and he has a kid now, and for him, where you met him in the pilot, he's just gone through more things. And I think that's sort of um, kind of uh, what makes the show work in a way, like we said earlier, in that in, in, in all its weirdness and sort of screwball, wackadoo, whatever, that at the end of the day, it sort of uh, demonstrates a sort of... Did you get it? I did. Cool. Um, a relatable life experience, which is that we sort of change over time without realizing it. And, and li- life just sort of changes us as it happens. 
And I think that Jimmy just sort of naturally and organically is becoming more of an adult, a very not stupid adult. <laughs> Also, your hair got a lot, a lot better in the three years. They let you, yes. they, they, they let you cut it, cut it a little more. That's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> the hair evolution, raising him. Uh-huh. I love it. Another BuzzFeed listicle coming at you guys. <laughs> Sorry, it's a flashback joke from that. I don't know. Um, but let me ask you this, because I think as fans of the show, we all have moments and episodes that really stand out, whether it's mongooses or Sabrina with you know the thing on her head to keep the spiders out of her ears. Um, Jimmy's amazing goth makeup was a big fan favorite. Looking back on the three seasons, what are some episode favorites that you guys have? What was your favorite one? Uh, I like anything where I get to put on lots of makeup. <laughs> um, weird, like I love being the Hulk. It was a pain to get into and out of it. Like I was green for a week afterwards. You were mad at first. I was a little bit mad. Well, because I was like, I'm out and I look sickly. <laughs> like I look like I have strayed to some weird green skin disease. Um, but uh, I really like like playing the like Wilfred. I think when we did like the episode where Chloe sort of we see we see me through Mama's eyes. Um, and I love uh, the moments of, of real genuine sweetness. Like, I, I really dig those. There's a moment in season one where Cloris, like, Bert and Virginia walk in on Mama, and, and she's having a real moment of sort of, like, the old-timer's disease. I think the fake girlfriend episode where, you know, I sort of reveal myself to you. Um, the Mother's Day episode, I think. You know, especially, you know, the, there are things where it's, like, I really love. Sorry. <laughs> Take care of it. Are you gonna stay for the next show? Are you gonna be here next time? Yeah. Are you gonna stay? Or you know, stay? What do you think? It's gonna it's gonna continue to be amazing. Sorry, I need answers. Right seats? Are the seats comfy? If you find a comfy seat, ride that wave to shore, brother. Did you order me a bean salad? Just all day. A bean uh-huh. salad. Don't go anywhere. The acoustics in here are it's great, the, by the way. Yeah. It must be annoying if you're actually watching a movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is pretty great, right? Yeah. Why is she going into that, that door? What the fuck is raising hope? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Shannon? Favorite moments or episodes? Mm, you know, I really liked the, uh, the pantyhose on the head episode with the spiders and stuff. That was the first one where, like, you know, after we got through the second season, like, halfway through, I was like, hey, um, everybody else is crazy, and I'm just standing here watching them all the time, like... They're like, you know what, I know, I'm so sorry. And I was like, but it's not fair. Like, what am I supposed to do standing in these scenes all the time? Let me be crazy, too. That was a, and that he, was was like, he was like, I've got a good idea. We're just going to take you off your meds. So then, like, at any point, we can just write whatever we want, and then you don't have to be the straight person all the time. I, so that was fun. That was really fun for me. I though. just saw uh, that episode again recently, and I, uh, do you remember the makeout sesh we had? Oh, yeah, with the music the tongue, yeah. I was, it's really gross. I'm going to die. It was funny. It was, that was fun. I liked that a lot. I mean, that was like, I think one of the first times on the show where I felt like um, I was like kind of speaking more in my own voice. So I felt like it was kind of some of the funnier stuff I'd done on the show at that point. So that was fun. I really liked that a lot. Tremendous. Well, Shannon, Lucas, thank you so much for coming out thank today. You. Woo! Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.